men who apologize just to make quote unquote a situation go away are trying to build a healthy marriage on the ostensibly firm foundation of lying to their wives. Welcome to Man Rampant. I'm Douglas Wilson. One of the more troubling aspects of life in the modern church is the marked tendency to assume that women don't need pastoral care. Not only so, but men can often receive excessive, not to mention abusive, pastoral care. You may not be able to detect it, but my last use of care there had scare quotes around it. The concept of male headship, which is taught throughout scripture, is not to be confused with the false doctrine that men are to be blamed for everything. There's a difference between responsibility, which men do have, and fault, which they may or may not have. In the military, if a ship runs aground in the middle of the night, because some enlisted man with three weeks left in the Navy, say, was being careless and he didn't follow the assigned protocols, who's at fault? Well, since this is not a trick question, that particular sailor is. But who is responsible? Whose head is on the Admiral's desk in the morning? Whose career as a naval officer is essentially over? Well, that would be the captain. This is the difference between responsibility and fault. The sailor is at fault. The captain is responsible. Not only is this the way it is, we should note that this is the way it is for a reason. God has determined to run the world this way. The fact that responsibility flows upward is not grossly unfair to those in positions of responsibility. Blame settles on the culprit, at least for all fair-minded people. Blame is a matter of justice. Responsibility is a function of covenant. Now it has to be said that confusion of these two categories is one of our generation's besetting sins. We have a real problem with this. We're in a frightful muddle over it. Suppose you're attending a bachelor party, the kind of tame affair that reformed Christians might host. The guys are sitting around, they have a few beers and they sing a few psalms. Then comes the time for all the veteran husbands to give counsel and advice to the young husband-to-be. Suppose one of the men says something like this, you must never apologize to your wife. He then pauses for dramatic effect, unless you have actually done something wrong. Then you should apologize instantly and without guile but never apologize simply as a way of making peace. Apart from filling the room with consternation, what is happening here? The reason for this is that men who apologize just to make quote unquote a situation go away are trying to build a healthy marriage on the ostensibly firm foundation of lying to their wives. That is not a good strategy. That has historically had very bad consequences, the kind that theologians of another era used to call bad juju. It is an easy trap to fall into. In fact, our entire culture appears to have done so. There appears to be a vast conspiracy afoot, one that revolves around the idea that we should all band together and lie to the women. The reality is that the Christian faith teaches us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Men are sinners and women are sinners, and they each have temptations that accord with their respective natures. It ought to be possible for pastors to address those temptations the way the writers of the New Testament did. Men, watch out for this. Fathers, be careful about that. Wives, make sure you don't fall into this trap. It ought to be possible, but in the current climate, it isn't really. At least when it happens, it requires an act of courage. Mm -hmm.